gentlemen. Good day and welcome to the Loris Labs Limited Q4 and full year FY23 earnings conference call hosted by Antique Stock Broking Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Monish Shah from Antique Stock Broking. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Darwin. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Loris Labs 4Q FI23 results conference call. We thank the management for giving us the opportunity to host this call. Today we have with us uh, Dr. Satyanarayana Chawa, founder and CEO, and Mr. V.V. Ravi Kumar, executive director and CFO. I will now hand the call over to Dr. Satya for his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Munish. Um, thank you, all of the investors joining us for our Q4 and the full year FA23 results conference call. We are pleased to have this opportunity to update you on our progress and answer your uh, questions. FA23 has been a year of significant achievements and meaningful progress for Laris Labs in light of a challenging environment globally. Our R&D driven manufacturing strategy across our key growth pillars did very well. And I'm glad that our team has delivered on several scientific and operational milestones. We are on track with our diversification roadmap and executing on opportunities ahead of us today and at the same time focusing on what matters for the long term. Some of these initiatives have started giving results, especially in our CMO and CDMO business. We made significant progress in FA23 advancing our scientific capability in offering several key technologies to global customers, including access to technologies like continuous flow chemistry, at lab and commercial scale, biocatalysis, continuous chromatography, enzyme development and manufacturing, precision fermentation, just to name a few. We secured an important breakthrough with the major big pharma uh, with record delivery of a large purchase order. There were several pipeline projects from big and medium-sized discovery companies. Revenue from animal health products expected from second half of FA24. We also made important internal success with broadening pipeline products, collaborations, process efficiencies, innovative drug product platforms, in a new sterile lab, and qualified new capacities for commercial APS and intermediate production. We are confident in the underlying demand for our portfolio and making efficient use of strongly linked technology platforms, customer centricity, and manufacturing excellence to seize new business opportunities and widening our target markets across human health, animal health, agrochemicals, and consumer health. We wanted to provide you an update on our strategy collaboration with Cell and Gene Therapy platform company, ImmunoAct. They are making very good progress, and our investment have supported establishing a state-of-the-art GNP car T cell therapy facility in Mumbai. They have also initiated a phase two for HCAR-19 in lymphoma and leukemia post positive phase one data. We'll continue following our disciplined approach to investments in disruptive technologies, and we will act when scientific opportunity and value align together. We have remained focused on the long-term growth and success by delivering on existing CapEx projects. Throughout FA23, we invested heavily into strategic growth objectives. We have increased our API drug testing capacities by 30% during FA23. And these capacities are in various stages of ramp up for commercial production. Our CDMO investment is also to capture high value opportunity. It's progressing very well. 
we are entering FA24 with greater confidence that we are creating a sustainable engine that will bring greater business resilience and generate long-term sustainable value to our stakeholders. Moving on to our financial business, despite the challenges in the business environment, the company achieved strong growth in revenues by 22% to 6,041 crores and an EBITDA of close to 600 crores, 1594 crores. Delivering a margin of 26%. The growth we experienced in FA23 reflects fundamental strength of our key growth pillars, CDMO, generics, other than antiretrovirals. The strong growth was after taking into account unexpected and severe pricing led impact in ARU formulations as well as APIs. We believe these began to stabilize, and our Q4 results was challenging driven by completion of material purchase order supplies last quarter and a higher upfront cost on growth projects. We reported 1,381 crores in revenues, representing a 4% revenue decline. If you look at from FI 18 to 23 overall, we had a strong cumulative performance. We had delivered diversified regional growth, strong double-digit sales growth of 25% CAGR, and the EBITDA margin improved by over 500 basis points. In the period FI 18 to 23, share of non area business improved from 27% to 60%. That was a big achievement for us. Going into detailed performance update, I would like to share key updates on our formulation business. In line with the expectation of formulation, division continued to recover sequentially and reported overall revenues of 1140 crores per full year. But it declined almost 40 percent versus FA22. The year, year sales was impacted mainly due to severe price fall and soft demand of ARV formulations. We remain intensely focused to stabilize ARV business through, throughout FA24 and beyond while navigating pricing headwinds created by the competition. We have successfully implemented several measures around expansive portfolio and cost improvements. We believe these measures will sufficiently ensure our market readiness and confidence of sustaining our leadership in first line ARV treatment, both in APIs as well as formulations. Coming to the developed market, we continue to perform well across our portfolio despite higher competitive intensity. During FA23, we filed 13 dossiers in the developed markets, six in the US, four in Europe, and three in Canada. In the US, we continue to get good market share on select products and also increasing volumes for our recently launched products. During the quarter four, we filed one and taking the total filing to six for FA23. Cumulatively, we have 40, 37 andas. Of this, we have a total 14 final approvals and 12 22 approvals. We continue to have a diverse portfolio of products, including Fire for D21 and uh, ARVs, cardiovascular, CMS, and uh, gas, uh, GI products. In Canada, we filed one product during quarter four, taking the total of 20 filing. Of those, we got 13 approvals and nine were launched. And we expect to launch three more during FA24. In the EU, we have a basket of 12 approved products, uh, out of which six were launched, and we have continued to deepen our contract manufacturing relationship through the FA24 and anticipate more volumes in the coming quarters. During the year, we invested significantly into expanding our non arv formulation infrastructure with a total commissioned capacity of 10 billion units. We anticipate but some of these brownfield capacities that we added during this year should start to get better utilized during FA24 as we begin to see better demand, visibility in ARV business, CMO portfolio, and key product approvals across US, Europe, and Canada. On the R&D front, our overall R&D spend to sales was about 3.5%. We continue to make good progress and invest in portfolio with product-specific approach based on complexity and economies of scale. During FY23, we filed our first NDA uh, for novel HIV pediatric 
product using oral dissolving fluids technology. And we intend to maximize the opportunity by leveraging this platform to create innovative pipelines in other therapeutic areas. Our sterile R&D labs, which were commissioned during the mid-2022, is already working on several priority projects. We have a total of uh, over 60 products in the R&D pipeline, either on review or on development, having an addressable market size of over uh, $40 billion. We have filed so far 37 handouts in US, 15 dossiers in Europe, 20 in Canada, 9 with WHO, 7 dossiers in South Africa, 1 dossier in Australia, 20 dossiers in India, and 23 products filed in various RW markets. As we explained multiple times, our approach remains product specific, not market specific. Going to generic API, our generic API division during FA23 reported strong and all round growth of 28% to 2,609 crores, supported by continued CMO opportunities in API APIs as well as healthy growth in non-ARVs, as well as ANCO APIs. Our antiviral API business delivered 21% growth, and we achieved 15 and 13 crores. This growth was partially due to low base effect, which was impacted by channel destocking. We continue to maintain a leading market share in the current product line. Anko API business reported a growth of 10% during FA23 at 318 crores. A Q4 saw strong recovery following uptake in one of the key products. As all of stakeholders are aware, Laris Labs has one of the largest high potent API capacities in India and are aim to strengthen this further by partnering with the global companies. Non-ARV, non-ANCO business also did very well, which includes cardiovascular, diabetes, and asthma products. We have seen steady ramp up of these products for the quarter and full year after 23. During Q4, these, this segment reported 230 crore sales, growing about 38% year on year. While FI23, the growth is robust at more than 50%, supported by continued ramp up in new contract supplies. In Q4, we filed two DMFs. In the full year, we filed six DMFs. All are in non-ARV category. With this total number of DMFs filed to date is 79. We also are working with few more generic customers for CMO opportunities, and some of them are in very advanced stage of implementation. During the year, the synthesis business recorded a sales of 2,167 crores, representing an increase of over 136% year on year. This growth was driven by high quality delivery of a large order on time and accelerated demand from existing and few projects from new customers. We have further strengthened our partnership and signed several new clinical stage projects with a few big pharma customers. We continue to work on over 60 active projects and ongoing commercial supplies for about 10 products, including few APS as well as several advanced intermediates. As indicated earlier, we are making good progress on new sites for CDMO division, both R&D centers as well as manufacturing facility for animal health. New sites will have capabilities to handle steroids, hormones, and high potent molecules apart from large volume products. Commercial GMP manufacturing of animal health products uh, will begin during the second half of FA24. Going on to Laras Bio, this Bio generated a full year with, uh, reported strong growth of 24% at 125 crores for the entire year. The growth was driven by substantial increase in the uptake of CDMO business. 
during FA23, we have enhanced technical expertise in small molecule manufacturing, which will strengthen our offering in the APIs and CDMM segment. We have completed scheduled expansion at R1, including new R&D block, along with uh, balancing downstream equipment. And our new capacity implemented R2 is in the ramp up phase with large scale CDMO partners. New greenfield site at R3 is in design finalization phase. We expect expansion to happen in a phased manner. This site should further strengthen large bio capabilities in offering CDMO services in animal origin free proteins, growth factors, apart from large scale precision fermentation. We believe global opportunity in alternate food proteins is, a, is an exciting phase, and our focus is to have the right scale, cost, and functionality. This will drive our technology differentiation. Now let me turn on to our FI24 outlook. While we continue to focus on operational excellence and evolving R&D platform, we anticipate FI24 to be a consolidation year of sales growth. As mentioned before, we are working on several new projects from Big Pharma, and a meaningful contribution from these products likely to happen in the medium term. Also, new capacities invested during FY23 is expected to get optimally utilized towards second half of this year. With that, I will hand over this to Ravi to share some financial highlights. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Satya, and a uh, warm welcome uh, to all the, all the participants uh, for our uh, FI23 and quarter 4 earning call. Uh, total income from operations uh, of the full year is at 6,041 crores, against 4,936 crores with a growth of 32%. Uh, during the quarter, uh, 1,381 crores uh, registered as a revenue against 14.5 crores. With a decline of 3% uh, year on year. The gross margin for full year uh, was moderately uh, down to 54.1%. This is uh, largely due to significant price fall in AR portfolio and uh, change in product mix. Our rebate of our FI23 is at uh, 1594 crores uh, with 26%, whereas for the quarter one, uh, 21%. Uh, with rupees 287 crores. For FI23, the business mix had positively contributed as margin pressure and ARV business got materially offset by increasing CDMO oblique CMO business, but the negative operating leverage on new capacities commission and higher inflation impact led to the margin fall compared to the last year. We are working on several initiatives around the Productivity and cost improvement to manage its impact in FA24. Uh, we are using three uh, three phone strategy. One is uh, on the raw material price improvements. Uh, second is on the process improvements. Third is on the uh, in-house manufacturing of the, some of the intermediate per ARB. These three we expect uh, the impact will be minimized in FA24. Our diluted EPS for FA23 is 14.6 uh, uh, with a decline of uh, 5%. Our uh, return on capital employed is at 23.1 uh, versus the 26.3%. Uh, we have been able to manage uh, due to better networking capital management uh, when compared to the March 22 uh, numbers. On the CapEx front, uh, we are on in line with 2,000 crore guidance for the two years, FA23 and FA24. Uh, 990 crores was spent on the uh, on the capex side in FI23. Uh, next FI24, our majority of our capex uh, is on synthesis and bio, uh, and almost like 800 crore we are uh, trying to invest into the synthesis business. And the capex investment made in FI3 uh, will start generating revenue from the second half of uh, FI24. Uh, with this, I would request the moderate to open lines for the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. 
If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ravi Agarwal from Agarwal Investment. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible, sir? Yes. Yes, right. yes sir. Namaste. Sir, uh, what type of, my question is, what type of growth you see India as a key supplier of API or intermediate when we consider energy crisis in Europe due to war situation or any other region? Whether due to energy crisis in Europe, uh, many plants are cut off for API and it will be create an opportunity for company like Lores in India? The energy crisis in Europe will definitely make cost of manufacturing higher. And if you look at the opportunities for companies like Laris Labs will be in intermediate and APIs, not in the large volume products like specialty chemicals and uh, other performance chemicals. Uh, for the opportunity to be captured, people need to have capacities. If you look at Laris Labs invested almost 1,000 crores in the last year to see such kind of opportunities. If you go to companies who wanted to look for contract manufacturing, if some company says, please give me contract and I will put up capacities, and it will take 15 to 18 months to set up capacities. So Laris is well positioned to take such advantage. And uh, we are seeing some opportunities like that, what you have mentioned, uh, Ravi. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, one more question. Ki what type of competency in Kidioma we have when we compare our company with uh, Longia or Samsung Biologic or Vokti or Singin? Because that is heard uh, from Samsung Biologic that is they are opening the fifth plant for biomanufacturing. So, what type of competency we have as we compare to other companies? We are not into uh, recombinant or bio CMO right now. So our Laris Bio is not into therapeutic protein. Our Laris Bio is into enzyme manufacturing, is into food protein manufacturing, not into therapeutic protein manufacturing as yet. So we are not offering um, recombinant protein, uh, maps for therapeutic use as of now. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, what type of businesses are included in the queue? you to please rejoin the queue. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhav Marda from Fidelity International. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I just wanted to understand a couple of things. Firstly, you've been mentioning about, uh, you know, we're front-ending uh, some costs uh, in, because we're adding new capacity. Could you quantify broadly how much is the upfront cost which is not uh, using revenue at this point? Uh, we can give you how much capacity is not utilized, but we will not give you how much cost we are absorbing. But one standard uh, principle what we followed in the inception the pre-operative cost of any capacity which is coming online until commercialization is expensed, not even a single dollar is capitalized. Currently, for example, Q4, uh, we have utilized our capacities between 55 and 60 percent. So a lot of spare capacity is available right now for us to seize any opportunities. Okay. And uh, our plants can uh, uh, potentially run at 100% or is the peak utilization like 85%? How does it work in our industry? Uh, um, it's about 85%. 85%. Okay. Yeah. And then just the second question which I had was, um, if you could just talk about um, the opportunities that we're seeing from, uh, like you mentioned just in the previous question about uh, opportunities coming from Europe. Uh, we won the animal health contract that starts in second half. Is there any more such contracts which which could potentially win in the next uh, one year? Uh, just wanted to understand your thought process if we could. Um, see, we have several programs in phase two, phase three, but we don't know how many of those will advance into commercial. 
So um, uh, we have no control, and typically we don't get uh, a contract for future supplies until the molecule moves into commercial phase. Um, th there are several programs we have, and the uh, good thing is we have capacities to capture those opportunities if they move into uh, in, uh, commercial phase. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nishant Shah from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, basically, my question is, uh, is there any uh, one-off in the revenue? The one of the large contracts we executed Big Pharma, we haven't considered any sales in FA24. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what was the quantum? Sorry? Uh, what was the quantum? Okay. Quantum, we can't... Uh, can't give you a number. We are not disclosed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay, thanks. Another question is uh, on the uh, outlook. Uh, what is your outlook on the uh, near term and the long term? Uh, and uh, and uh, you are talking of the uh, cost improvement and the uh, technology improvement. Uh, ongoing projects and pipeline and the new growth launches. Uh, will you be able to uh, maintain the 25% uh, of CAGA growth uh, that you are saying and uh, any uh, new addition of the geographies? Uh, we, our growth will come from capturing more opportunities with the existing partners. We are not anticipating growth coming from new geographies. And uh, uh, are there, uh, is there any uh, line item in the revenues uh, which have occurred in this uh, year or uh, in this quarter, uh, but uh, it will not be a part of a uh, next year or the uh, future revenues? Sorry, your voice. No, is, is there any line item in future revenues captured in the current year? No. 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 Nothing, right? Yeah. Okay, and the last question is, uh, if uh, we are seeing uh, the uh, slowdown uh, in the uh, U.S. Uh, and uh, uh, there are news of uh, U.S. may go into a recession, what kind of uh, incremental uh, impact uh, that can be seen on the company? Our generic sales in U.S. is not significant for us to get impacted. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that's on my side. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. The next question is from the line of Harit Ahmed from Avendis Spark. Please go ahead. Good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, the 60% uh, quarter-on-quarter growth that we've seen in the FDS business, uh, we're trying to understand uh, how much of that has come from ARV formulations versus uh, the exports to uh, uh, US and uh, Europe. Uh, so, if you could share the ARV formulations number for the quarter, that would be helpful. Uh, generally, in the quarter four, uh, we did 393 crores uh, sales in formulations. Above that, uh, the ARVs is, um, I would say, 60 um, percent is uh, ARVs and the rest is non-ARVs. Okay. And then, and going forward, forward for the uh, overall ARV business, uh, in the past we had given guidance of around uh, 2,500 crores of revenues for the API plus the FDF uh, ARV combined. Uh, are we maintaining that number for uh, FI24 and, and beyond? Yes. Yes, uh, we will definitely maintain that number in FA24 and beyond. Okay. And then in the presentation, you mentioned that uh, you've completed supplies under the large purchase order in December uh, 22. Uh, while uh, the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Pfizer has talked about, uh, you know, uh, continuing uh, or are guided for uh, fairly large uh, you know, revenues from the product in uh, calendar 23 as well. 
तो कैन बी एक्सपेक्ट फर्दर ऑर्डर्स अंडर दिस पार्टनरशिप यू नो इन इन फ्यूचर we we don't know and uh, we have no uh, knowledge on that how things will move yeah. okay L- last one with your permission uh, <laughs> lspn u unit 3 and unit 4 uh, you know uh, how should we think about the timeline uh, for uh, commissioning of those two capacities see lspl 2 uh, will be for uh, animal health that uh, will go into commercial portion second half of uh, f24 and lspl 4 is for agrochemical that we already have a pilot plan for uh, registration batches and commercial production will happen maybe by second half of f25 okay and and you know we we we've had a couple of years of close to 1000 crores of capex and we we are guiding for a similar number in fy24 how should we think about uh, capex uh, beyond the fy24 uh, will there be a uh, reduction in the capex intensity in the business uh, i think we take another quarter to give a guidance on an fy25 we are working on that uh, probably maybe a lesser than the what we are spending in the in the in the current year and the next year it all depends on what opportunities will come for us see the opportunities are there we are happy to invest see we uh, two years back we never thought we will invest 2000 crores in capex but we are investing because there is a visibility for us what to make how much to make to whom to sell yeah. all right sir that's all from my side thanks for taking my question thank you the next question is from the line of bino pati parampil from incred capital please go ahead hi um thanks for taking my question just a couple of uh, clarifications um so when you say fy24 is a consolidation year um can we assume that it is like broadly a flat year for at the revenue level Uh, i think you can think that way because uh, we were saying class year despite not having that large contract in fy24 we still maintain our growth slightly over fy23 is a big achievement so we are not giving any quantitative guidance uh, even you assume it will be flatish uh, despite not having that large contract we will still um grow our previous year is a good achievement understood and uh, the fall q ebitda margin level uh, is that a good base to work with uh, i'm not looking for any specific number for fy24 but uh, you know generally is that a good uh, reference point for us to work forward yeah so but we we'll get back to you at uh, appropriate time about how uh, so maybe our q1 and q2 results will give you some guidance which direction we are going in the margin but we can assure you uh, our ebitda margin will not go below 20 yeah 21 but what we say so yeah understood great and uh, i see that you have adopted um, uh, the new uh, uh, policy for tax so what would be your reported tax rate for fy24 onwards 23.17 we are uh, moving to new regime okay so it will be 25 yeah okay great thank you i'll jump back with you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of g1 patma from sahasra capital please go ahead yeah uh, the one person i think is uh, this time the sorry is it the line for you is a little muffled okay okay so i am basically saying this quarter uh, formulation and api has picked up very well uh, but cdmo is actually much below expectation so is there any kind of deferment of shipment or anything no no there is no deferment of shipment given uh, this is the we delivered what orders we were supposed to deliver in q4 we delivered Now, nothing was deferred okay okay 
because even if i look at the whole uh, year and if i just removed at one time uh, not one time but the large uh, product uh, delivery one time delivery then uh, the cdm itself year on year doesn't look uh, any growth so uh, cdm you can't have a flat a, a straight line or a um, so it will be depending on what customer needs that you deliver so it will be a uh, little bit bumpy sales you can expect in cdm not just for us for any customer sure 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 uh, and secondly the, the gross margin has actually dipped below 50% this time so i am asking this since last two three quarters i think uh, but i am still not able to understand uh, the gross margin trajectory has been down since last few quarters so earlier it, there, there was la, last cdmo the gross margins were almost 57 58% uh then cdmo percentage of same but still gross margin actually came to almost uh, 54% and 53% and now it is below 50 so uh, what kind of gross margin you think we can assume actually going forward is it 50 to 53 is a good uh, consistent uh, sustainable gross margin uh, we can assume you see the gross margin impact was mainly due to the price pricing in ARV, APS and formation. Correct. As we, as we implement some measures in process improvements, manufacturing cost improvement, purchase pricing improvement, uh, these margins will improve. I, I will not give a quantitative number how much will improve, but definitely margins will improve. Okay, perfect, sir. And the last question is on the formulation side. Uh, any any uh, guesstimate on you know how much uh, will be our uh, utilization on uh, per billion tablet basis? So how much uh, will it be right now, and how much you think it will be at the end of the year? Currently, we are around 50% capacity utilization out of 10 billion. We expect that will go to 70% by end of FA24. Okay. Okay. Perfect, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tushar Manudhane from Motila Lospal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Sir, so, uh, just on your uh, guidance of FI24 remaining stable compared to FI23 in terms of uh, the overall financial performance, so, uh, will that be spread across four quarters and considering that four quarter F fourth quarter FI23 we had 100 crore pack, so should one expect rebound uh, in Q4 FI24 onwards or that will be more back-ended as the animal health contract picks up second half FI24? That's my first question. Uh, Tushar, actually we, we don't want to give a guidance on the quarterly basis, like even on the annual basis, uh, whatever Dr. Sathya has indicated, at the base run annual. Okay. Uh, and just secondly, on this formulation capacity, uh, while we had good number of ANDAs filed uh, over past couple of years, but not seen good, so great traction, at least on the US generic side. So this new non-ARV formulation, you know, uh, where do we see the business prospects from? Is it more from ANDAs or is it more from the, uh, the customer-specific contracts? Significant growth in formulations in non ARV will come from contract manufacturing and also increased sales in Europe, uh, increased sales in US and Canada. Okay, thank you. That's it from me. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Gaurav Singhal from Aspects Management Hong Kong Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for taking my question. So one is, uh, can you share how many projects you have in phase three for the CDMO project or, uh, or for the CDMO segment or any other color on phase three that you're working on? Uh, we are only giving the total number of active projects uh, over 60. Uh, we are not giving the detailed breakup of uh, how many in phase one, phase two, phase three? Yeah. Okay, no worries. And then secondly, on the on the deck on the slide that you have for FY24 outlook, you mentioned that one of the negative factors is 
uh, lower prices for ARV, API, and FDF. So, I'm, I'm, uh, is this, uh, are you suggesting that the prices in FY24 can be lower from Q4? Because my, my, my uh, impression was that ARV API prices, for example, already stabilized. And also on the FDF, we got this global fund contract, which where the price is kind of known. So, maybe if you can share some thoughts on why you feel prices can be lower again in FY24. We don't expect the prices will be lower when compared to Q4 to Q1 FA24. We're not expecting that. We believe the average prices were bottomed oh, up. I, yeah. I see. So it's more of full year FA24 versus when we got it. And just one last thing. So on this global fund uh, project for the ARV uh, formulation, when do we expect to start the shipment and uh, what can be the cadence of the ramp up? That's uh, shipments um, uh, started already. Yeah. Got it. Uh, sorry, just one more if I may. For the large project uh, in CDMO, uh, did we have any contribution of that in Q4 or did we have no contribution in Q4? No. Yeah. No. The, the large order must be delivered as no contribution in uh, Q4. Got it. Got it. That's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bharat from Quest for Value Capitals. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, hi sir. This is Bharat from Kotagodam. I uh, hope you're doing good. Uh, uh, in the presentation, I see uh, there is a new greenfield <coughs> capex in its line uh, for FDF in Hyderabad. May you know for uh, how many uh, how much uh, billion tablet capacity is that? So that capacity we purchase land. But we haven't started construction of formulation facility in Azerbaijan. Okay. Yeah, because the we to, have it. Mm -hmm. The first facility will come up in that site will be sterile commercial manufacturing and then followed by oral solid manufacturing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Because I think uh, in Vizag, I think we have. Uh, I know uh, we have already the civil structures ready, and then uh, if we just add the lines, I think we could uh, increase the capacity from 10 billion to 15 billion, I guess, right? 15 billion. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So that is the reason the, the new formulation capacity will come up in Hyderabad will be for sterile commercial manufacturing, not for rural solids. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, my second question is like this is more on the long term. I want to know your vision like five years down the line, uh, may you know like how you see the product mix changing, uh, may you know uh, how much could be the share of uh, CDMO and bio together combined five years down the line? Uh, very interesting question. Yeah. So this year, which we have discussed in FA23, our CDMO revenue was 36%. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, CDM and bio in five years it should be fifty percent maybe. Fifty percent, okay. That, that's only a, a broad number. Yeah. Broad number. Yeah, got it. Yeah, that that comes to my next question. Like we have many divisions now. If you see, we have human health CDMO, we have animal health CDMO, we have agro CDMO, we have bio, we have uh, genetic FDF, we have ARV as well. Um, so uh, I just want to know, like, uh, do you think uh, you have uh, enough management bandwidth to manage all these uh, divisions? Yes, um, in the CDMO, how we define in part of CDMO or not, you are selling any product where technology comes from the partner and sell it to only one, that CDMO for us. So there is no technology risk, there is no market risk. Uh, there is no pricing risk because all those are three determined. So our management bandwidth is only in the manufacturing space, not in the business development space or procurement space. That, that's the easy business to handle for us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We have an enough uh, management bandwidth at this juncture, and we have been reviewing over, over on a periodical basis, and as and when necessary, we induct more people into the system. Okay, and and when you say that you want to aspire for fifty percent of uh, share from CDM and Bio in five years from now, so it means uh, I understand that the management focus is more towards CDM more than generic. Uh, it's not focus. Uh, you see, if you look at the 
invest presentation what we posted uh, the revenues coming from uh, non arb has gone up significantly fine mm -hmm. i just yeah. add one yeah yeah, yeah. 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 here yeah. in your question there is an answer so when you say 50% to the cdm and bio the 50% is generic so it is not that uh, we have an equal focus yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's it from my side. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Monish Shah from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. No, actually, my questions are answered. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sneha Agarwal from Sage One Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Thank you so much for taking my question. Uh, Dr. Kapoor, you guided for FY24 revenue growth uh, as this the last base of FY23. Just wanted to understand uh, the growth guidance is also in terms of profitability or is more of top line growth that you are more confident about? We will give you more guidance um, um, as we re declare results. Uh, in Q1, FI24, and Q2, FI24. So we can't give you more um, granular details right now. Uh, not only looking at numbers here, but if you could just uh, suggest whether uh, this is in terms of top line or bottom line. Uh, give you guidance on the top line. Okay. okay. Thank you. And uh, another question from my side would be, and the KPEX that we did in the last two years, FI22-23, and then the plan that we have for 24, all put together close to 50,000 to 50,000 crores. Uh, in how many years subsequently do you think uh, we could achieve full utilization of this KPEX? I think the current capacities will be fully utilized by FI25. And I, I'm sure FI25 will put more CapEx to increase your capacities. See, if we don't increase capacities, the growth opportunities are also limited. So we need to continue to invest. See, if we look at, uh, we have uh, added 30% APA capacity in the last 24 months. And we have added 50% more capacity in formulation in the last 24 months. So that's a significant improvement in capacity. Yeah. Yeah, so yes, we have uh, the capacity put up so far, at least for that we are expecting 325. Yes. And just one last question, if I may, from my side. Uh, so, out of the 60 plus active projects that you have currently in the uh, principal side, any new uh, projects uh, that we are expecting to go commercial in FI24? Just on the expectations side. I, I, I'm sorry, we can't give you those kind of deals, but uh, See, if, uh, we broadly mentioned we are putting capacities, what to make, how much to make, whom to sell. At least there is clarity. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arun from Nuvama. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, my question related to two parts. One is that your CDMO business. Uh, I'm in your CDMO uh, uh, page in your PPT, which you have released. So if you look at your CDMO business is doing 200 crore on an average, if you exclude whatever the one-off number are. So just trying to understand that if you look at even five quarter, your CDMO business remain in same level, like 200 rupees, 200 crore per quarter, right? And uh, what is the what is the I mean say guidance you are giving for this business because it has a very high base and uh, to matching that high base it will be very difficult even to achieve the same kind of number in FI25. Am I correct or you have some different views? I, I, I can't comment on your views. Your views we appreciate. Um, what we feel since we are investing to capture opportunity CDMO, uh, we see opportunities to grow. If we remain at 200, 250 crores per quarter, and for, there is no need for us to invest. No, but, uh, but you need to look at how the on a year on a year it has grown, right? 
So it was 500 crore a couple of years back. It moved from 500 to 900 crore. 900 crore, it's a you Only one, uh, uh, I can say one point of view is, we always say that one one off, one off. But uh, the kind of mileage we get from the execution of the contract will not give any credit. So, they, they see, as we are indicating uh, repeatedly for last four to six quarters, we are bullish on CDMO. We still we are bullish on CDMO. We can't uh, give more specific to this, but uh, uh, maybe over a period of time you can see the numbers. So, sir, same. Uh, you said that we are investing and therefore we are very confident that uh, this, what I can gauge from your words, right? We are investing. If the number will be remain 200 crore, then we should not have been investing. But if you look at your investment in last two years, you have almost invested like 3,000, 3,500 crore. And I presume that most of the business has gone to CDMO. If I do any kind of calculation, and if you are utilizing in 50-60%, it is not even matching your one-time uh, assets to turnover. If you, if I exclude your uh, one-off number. Anyway, we, we can know. discuss it. We can discuss it offline if you. Yeah, you want sure, to. Add but uh, but I just given a uh, glance and then we can discuss uh, offline any point of time, Arun. Uh, the if you look at the 2,000 crore investment, we never said it was invested for CDMO business. What we are saying is we are going to invest 800 crore into the CDMO business in FI24, and those kind of results you will see in the next FI25 onwards. So we can we can uh, discuss further on this uh, if you have any clarification or in offline. Okay. Thank and you. Second question is related to guidance, sir. If you look at your five quarter guidance, right? Just two three quarters, you tone down your guidance, right? That you will not be able to achieve one billion dollar. I can understand that there are a lot of uncertainty in business, right? But this is humble suggestion that when you guide something, right, you should have a, some kind of margin of safety for that, right? Again, if you look at this year, if you, if I whatever I can infer infer from your word. You are saying that in FY24, you will be probably a flat, right? If you do any kind of calculation, even you said that your FDA business, which is that fixed, I mean, say your generic business in US will not see any kind of competitive pressure. Uh, you answer for certain very specific question, which was that recession related. I can understand that recession may or may not. But in, in, in India or anywhere in the world, no generic company can guide that our business will not see any kind of pricing pressure. And you have done extremely well in last uh, 12 to 15 months. So this is my humble suggestion that when you're speaking with a lot of investors, at least 1,000 people are listening to you, at least have a, some kind of margin of safety when we speak uh, as far as the guidance is concerned. This is my humble suggestion, sir. Uh, Arun, uh, uh, thanks for your suggestion. What I mentioned, our formulation revenue coming from US is not that large to get impacted. That's the comment I made. I think Ravi want to make yeah. some comment. Uh, Arun, here uh, when we never gave any quantitative guidance uh, till we gave a billion dollar. Uh, of course, our investor friends also make an uh, some kind of a provocative approach in the sense, in a, in a not a negative way, positive way. What you will do, how you will do. Then in one of the point, actually, you know, we said billion dollar. In the, in the next quarter, when we came to know that the billion dollar is not going to happen, we gave a guidance, revised guidance, and we are on par with our revised guidance. In, in our invest presentation, also we mentioned that. So we are uh, cognizant of what we speak. It's not that we know, we are aware, well aware, uh, many people are watching us, and we, we also aware that how the uh, performance has been improved for over uh, several quarters, not one quarter or two quarters, and we also know that how we have been built the organization is. So in the 16-year time, we have invested 5,500 crores into CapEx. Uh, we have 6,500 families have been uh, working for us. So the, we, we are very cognizant of it. We also know the margin of safety. Thank you. Thanks, Rod, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurabh Kapadia from Sundaram Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So what is the one-off uh, in Q4 that impacted our habitat margins? Okay. 
there is nothing in q4 uh, no one okay so so how how should we look at the you know margins uh, for 24 like you you mentioned about the top line uh, to be uh, probably maintained at fy 23 level but any any color on margins how we should look at the margins you no know, uh, in 24 Uh, as, a, as we mentioned, uh, I think you will get more clarity and color when we give results for Q1 and Q2 and FY24. I, I think we will leave at that stage. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yasser Lakdawala from M3 Investment Private Limited. Please go ahead. uh good evening uh, dr chawar and team uh, you know i had a really question on our uh, you know on a non arv api side uh, probably the oncology api business is a, a low volume sort of high value api business but what about the other apis there so uh, what is our right to win in the other apis are they large volume products do we have some cost advantage there uh, to give some uh, you know uh, you know qualitative insight that our real life and uh, tell from that are these older or newer molecules you know basically things that have lost uh, ip protection in the near uh, in, 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 in the in in the recent past if you give some uh, color on that that would be very helpful sure so if you slide the api revenues of 2600 crores we mentioned 1530 crores coming from the uh, rv apis and uh, um, 328 crores is coming from uh, um, oncology 318 crores and about 780 crores is coming from non rv non onco in the seven i, I think that say let's 770 crores half of the revenue coming from uh, contract manufacturing of generic apis to generic customers okay so we are we are offering manufacturing as a service to our generic companies where they include our site into their dmf so technology is there dmf is there and we make with a defined margin at least is a good business because we know the raw metal cost our partner also know the raw metal cost we are not changing process we are most likely we are not changing the batch sizes also we create capacities for them so we are giving our manufacturing facility uh, kind of a toll manufacturing for them that's about half of the business rest is again a, a medium to large volume products we, we are not doing small volume products there those most of those products are well established generic molecules we are not uh, trying to get into day 181 or p4 markets there they are well established markets uh okay thank you uh, dr sir uh, uh, you know uh, also on the uh, formulation side i saw that uh, you know we have a few sort of para profiling and uh, uh, ftfs so just a sort of a longer term question and just to understand this better you know we have a, a cdmo business which is dealing with uh, you know big pharma and you know biotech uh, on the one side uh, you know we are doing ip protected uh, work for them and on the other side uh, we are you know uh, having these paracords and fqs so how does do you do you feel that we can run these two businesses independently is there any sort of case of uh, conflict of interest or you know if you could just help us understand how this uh, uh, you know what is your thought process here and how do you see your customers uh, reacting to this so we have thank you but there is a very pertinent question you have asked uh, it all depends on the customer and how we are approaching customer and ip uh, typically for the class of compounds we work we don't want to work in generics and uh, more often right now we are uh, not working on any p4 opportunities uh, with the partners which we are working so we are we don't want to have a conflict in business so we are also very clear on our approach right now to, to the cdm business sure and uh, uh last question here uh, 
you know we've had uh, you know had this one off uh, opportunity during covid uh, um, you know just to understand uh, from a company level margins uh, how do you see or, or you know to give us some color on the, or the EBITDA level profitability of our API and FDF business as uh, compared to EBM are they higher lower than uh, you know what would be our normalized margin we we gave a quantitative qualitative guidance that in the order of increasing profitability apis formulations and cdm that is the only guidance we gave and we stick to that we don't want to give any uh, absolute numbers there yeah. no, no worries no worries thank thanks a lot dr chaur thank, thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of god of single from aspects management limited please go ahead Oh, hi. Uh, thank you for taking my question again. So, just one follow-up on the CDMO side. Can you share some thoughts on the uh, competitive landscape and the supply of capacity that is coming up in India, and also specifically for Laura Labs? Uh, some of the advantages I can see, obviously, is they are working on 60 active projects. So, as they get commercialized, uh, you can be the vendor of choice, and then you also completed. this large uh, project on time are there any other advantages that can help us stand versus the competition uh, when we look at the new supply for cdm in india the indian cdm companies are well positioned to capture the opportunity uh, because of uh, supplier diversification initiatives by big pharma i think it is good opportunity not just for lot there are many other cdmo companies uh, will do very well that's what we feel the advantages are the ability to create capacities the ability to recruit people to support the capacities and uh, the the current global scenario is also helping india to get more projects i'll put it that way All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ratish Variyar from Sundaram Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, congrats, you know. Over the last two years, our execution etc. has been excellent. I would like to place that on board that it has been an excellent execution. So just one clarity only I wanted. Um, uh, one of my colleague also asked this on margins, so no guidance. But you know, if you see in the previous um, five six quarters, because of one of opportunities or specific contracts etc., we had certain margins, right? So I just wanted to understand as you move forward over the next uh, or one or two years, are those margins aspirational? or uh, you know there was a one off which went by and it will go by um, you know uh, what current q4 run exit run rate is there from that slowly improvement is what we have to see just wanted some colors on that you can give us some thoughts there thanks when the business was very uh, prosperous so even before this large contract we were inching towards 30% ebitda even before this large contract from global pharma company i think we'll put our efforts to improve our margins um, uh, and uh, the change in business mix and improvement in margins of arv business and our dependence on arv business goes down our margin focus should also increase if you look at our fi 18 to fi 23 the numbers we grew our arv business of 500 crores But not a huge business of four thousand crores. So, but the other uh, challenge what we are having is since we are adding lot of capacity, that lot of deleverage is happening. So as we move away from deleverage, leverage of our capacities and teams, I, I think our margins will improve. Yeah. Okay. 
just one more follow up sir uh, regarding you know the revenue guidance so i am not asking for any number year when uh, we are saying consolidation etc this is we are saying based on still we are left to sign certain um, uh, contract as you are saying there in pipeline um because of that we are not that confident from a guidance perspective uh, or we want to be more cautious this time thanks we are more cautious <laughs> okay and chanda thank you so much thank you Ladies and gentlemen, we will take the last question from the line of Madhav Malda from Fidelity International. Please go ahead. Uh, no, I just had one last question in the PPT. In the beginning, you know, mentioned about uh, you know want to invest up to 10% of profits on disruptive technologies. Uh, has it already started uh, in the previous quarters, or this is something we will be starting FY24 onwards? When we mentioned the disruptive technologies, the investment we made in Immuno Act is part of that. and we are evaluating few more opportunities um and uh, we are also very conscious not to invest more more than 10% of our profits in such kind of initiatives so we did one and we are evaluating one more and probably uh, when it is uh, materialized we'll let you know yeah, yeah. so sir, has this already uh, is already happened for so fy23 or is that i'm assuming it's already like happened in the last week this will happen in fy24 the new investment will happen in 24 not in fy23 the our investment in immuno act happened in fy22 actually fy22 fy23 we haven't done any such investments we we evaluated but we were moving um, forward and uh, we will let you know when uh, we will in something there And this is 10% of uh, PBP or the bidder. What does profit mean? Is that? It is a very, a very quality number. It's 10% of our profits. Yeah, back. Of back office. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, all uh, stakeholders, for uh, engaging discussions. and uh, whatever steps we do whatever investment we do whatever initiatives we do is for the benefit of all the all the stakeholders and we wish you all the best yeah thank you thank you on behalf of antique stock broking that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines